Do you need fish oil supplements, otherwise known as omega-3 fatty acids? Or is it just another fishy vitamin overhype? Let's talk about the benefits and how much to take in today's episode. If it's your first time here, I'm Dr. Maj. Consider subscribing to this channel for up-to-date medical topics, news, and headlines. Now, our bodies do not make omega-3s, and we rely on them for proper brain, eye, and heart function. The American Heart Association recommends the consumption of oily, fatty fish at least two times a week in order to obtain the sufficient amounts of the two of the best types of omega-3s called DHA and EPA. You don't need to know what they stand for. This means oily fish like salmon, herring, sardines, trout, albacore, tuna, which contain the richest DHA and EPA sources. Now, fish oil supplements are derived mainly from the same oily fish sources. But the only reason to even consider taking these supplements is if you cannot get it in your diet or you simply just don't like eating fish. Why? If you've watched my other videos, you know my take on this. Because it's always best to obtain your nutrients from your food. Yes. For those of you who are vegetarians, you can consider flaxseed, chia seeds, walnuts, and soybeans. You know I'm always representing you vegetarians, right? You know that. Although they don't provide DHA and EPA specifically, but a different type of omega-3 called ALA, our body can actually make some DHA and EPA from ALA, but just a small amount. So eating the fish is actually more ideal if you can. So here are some of the research-based benefits of omega-3. First of all, it can lower triglyceride levels. In fact, the American Heart Association just released a new advisory starting that omega-3 fatty acids can help lower very high triglycerides by 20 to 30% and can be safely used with statins. Unlike some prescription drugs that are used to decrease or lower your triglycerides that can interact with statins if you have trouble with your LDL and your uh, triglyceride level. However, the doses required are higher than typical dosing, although not found to be harmful in studies either. After reviewing 17 randomized controlled trials, they concluded that taking 4,000 milligrams of prescription omega-3 fatty acids daily were effective at reducing triglyceride levels. They note that they don't recommend the over-the-counter formulation since they're not FDA regulated. They can also modestly increase HDL, which is the good cholesterol, and may slightly raise HDL, the bad cholesterol. However, this increase is clinically insignificant. Number two, it can improve your blood pressures. In a large meta-analysis study of 70 randomized trials, fish oil reduced systolic blood pressure by one and a half millimeters of mercury and diastolic blood pressure by about one millimeter of mercury when taken at a minimum dose of 2,000 milligrams a day. It's not much. But the effects seem to be greater in those with untreated high blood pressure, reducing systolic by about four and a half points, and then diastolic by three whole points. It's not something that I'd use to treat hypertension first line, obviously, because the effects are really modest. But hey, every little bit helps sometimes, especially if you have borderline high blood pressures. Fish oil can reduce cardiovascular death. 250 milligrams per day of EPA and DHA may decrease the risk of death in those with cardiovascular disease, meaning a history of heart disease, heart attack, or stroke. No, it doesn't prevent heart attack or stroke, but just the risk of death from these events. This dose is generally sufficient and any increase in a dose higher than this really is without any extra benefit. Now, it's been suggested that it may reduce the risk of dementia and cognitive decline, but the studies here have shown mixed results, meaning some studies have shown benefit while others have not. The jury is really still out on this one. Now, if you're unable to get the omega-3 through your diet and you still opt for these supplements, well, here are a few tips to follow. Number one, opt for a thousand milligrams a day total for the average healthy person and make sure that it contains at least 250 milligrams of EPA and DHA specifically read the label. Number two, take it with heart healthy fatty foods like nuts and seeds, avocados for improved absorption. And lastly, always check with your doctor before you initiate anything, even a supplement, especially if you take other medications which it may interact with. Now I know what some of you are thinking, 
Dr. Maj, what about the mercury content of seafood? I mean, isn't the mercury in seafood bad for you? Could taking the supplements be less risky here? Well, the smaller fish have insignificant levels of mercury. Just avoid eating the bigger fish like shark, swordfish, king mackerel, or tilefish. They all contain higher levels of mercury. Now, you can eat any other type of fish in moderation, just like anything else in life. Bottom line, if you've seen me in clinic or you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I'm not a fan of supplements. They are way overhyped in the media and designed to really fool the consumer into purchasing this, these products by tricking us to think that if we take something that's non-prescription or natural, that it may actually be good for our health. I mean, we all wanna be healthy, right? Don't fall for it. Just eat a well-balanced diet and a variety of foods and you will already obtain all the nutrients through your foods. Anything extra that you take will be excreted and eliminated from your body. So you may feel more reassured by taking a vitamin, but it's really, it's likely unnecessary and a waste of your money. Now, if you found the information valuable, which is always my goal, subscribe, ring the bell, like, and consider sharing it with someone else who may find the video useful. Well, thanks for tuning in. Stay swimmingly healthy, and I'll catch you next time.